Wasn't that an amazing time of praise and worship, huh? Woo, man, it is great to be with you. Hey, this is our time for our kindergarten through sixth grade. Uh, we changed it up this, this time. It's through sixth grade. If you'll come right over here to my right, we have some ladies here that will take you upstairs, and that's where our children's church will be today. And so we're going to go out this uh, west door. So everyone down here in the front, so y'all come on down. And parents, remember that we're not going to be bringing them back into our service here this morning, that they're going to be going over to the fellowship hall, and so that's where you'll pick them up after our service is over. I do want to say very quickly before I start, we do have one other person in here that's very, uh, a very special person in here with us today, and I know he's probably going to kill me after this is over, but uh, so be it. Uh, we have Joe Lee, one of our longtime members here. He's back from his a year of deployment. And so he is here with us today. He's back home. And so thank you, brother. Thank you for all your sacrifice and all that you've done for us. And I know your family did well, but man, I know they're glad to have you home as much as we are. But again, thank you uh, for, for your service and uh, your sacrifice. And we, we again, appreciate you. And you can tell me off after church for embarrassing you. That's okay. But that's good. That's good. I got it out first. Amen. But anyway, hey, today we're going to continue with our connection to the church. Uh, as we've been talking about connecting to serve in 2021, today we're going to be again connecting to the church, looking at the title of the message would be One Body. God has made a beautiful organism in the church. Amen. The church, man, it's one of my favorite things. And I love the church. I love I love being a part of a church. I love being a member of a church. And, and I want you to know that I, I did, I enjoyed that even before I became a pastor. Because a lot of times when pastors say, we enjoy being a part of a church, a lot of membership go, yeah, well, because you're the pastor. Well, no, sometimes that's not the positive part of being a member of a church. Amen. But I enjoy being a part of a, of a family. And God has brought us together to form one body. And we're going to be looking today in the book of Romans chapter 12. I want you to look at verse, starting instead of verse 4, we're going to go back to verse 3 and verses 3 through 5 as the text that I'm going to be preaching from uh, this morning. So Romans chapter 12, starting at verse 3. If you're able to, would you please stand with us as we, in honor of reading God's word. You at home, please join in with us as we uh, read this text. The Bible says, For I say through the victory of the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but also the members do not have the same function, so we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for allowing us to have such a great time of praise and worship to honor our graduates. And man, what a great day it's been. And now, Father, as we step into this moment, I pray that every mind, every heart would be focused on your word here this morning. Father, thank you for this church. Thank you for creating one body here at First Baptist West. And Lord, I just pray that as we go through this time, that as always, Father, that The words that I'll be saying, they're not going to be my words, but Father, I pray they're yours. I pray that the message that you laid on my heart is not the message I planned, but one that you set up for me, and that, Father, I pray the response would be from your people as you desire for it to be, and it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you. Please be seated. There is a phrase, e pluribus unum. Now, e pluribus unum is is a phrase that was used at the beginning of our country that for a long time was, if you will, not the actual motto of, the, of, of America, but it was something that was used a lot of times as the unofficial motto of the United States. And E Pluribus Unum basically stands for out of many, one. And so our forefathers, whenever they declared this, they were saying out of all the 13 colonies, that we have 13 colonies, they all are original, they're all separate, but together they come out and they form one, one nation. And so when we look at this, and, and I'm thinking about this phrase, e pluribus unum, out of many, one, 
My friends, this is the description that Paul actually gives right here in this text that I read. That we are many members separate in our own lives, our own families, but by the grace of God, by His calling, by His design, He has taken all of us and formed us into one body, functioning together as a unified group with one purpose and one working spirit, and that is the Holy Spirit of God. So this is exactly what is involved here is that in the church. What, what makes us then the church? What makes us such an amazing body? What brings us to a point where we can be many separate individuals with many different likes and dislikes and preferences and uh, thoughts and, and directions? and how, What brings us together? And it is the Spirit of God working in the hearts and lives of each individual member that brings us together. So what is it that we see in this text that allows us to be able to do that? And the first thing is, is that it calls for us in order to be one body out of many people, there has to be humility. So it says to first call is to be humble. Look at what it says in verse 3. It says, for I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. In other words, in order for us to become a body, in order for us to become effective as God wants us to be, we're going to have to humble ourselves. We're going to first have to humble ourselves before God that we can receive Jesus Christ into our lives. Then we have to humble our will over to him and say, God, it's not what I want. It's what you want. So we have to be humble. But then once we get that humility before God, then the effect will have to be that we'll then have to be humble before each other. We'll have to consider each other before we consider ourselves. And we will never be that one body that God desires for us to be until all of us are able to humble ourselves before God, humble ourselves before each other, and say, it is not about me, it is about Him. So what we need to understand, my friend, is we are not God's gift to the church. Amen? And that's a lot of times, I think, how we feel. Well, boy, this church is so much better off because I'm a part of it. This church isn't doing anything without me. Unless I'm there to do it, then we're we're not going to be able to do anything. And so we see that too often we think we're the reason. We're the sinner. But Paul says in 2 Timothy 1.1, he says, Paul, an apostle of Christ, by the will of God. So what he's saying is, I'm an apostle of Christ, but it wasn't me that makes me an apostle. It's not my call that makes me an apostle. It is by the will of God. So can I tell you something here today? My friends, if you're here, if you're watching, you are not here by accident. You may say, well, I'm the one that chose to turn the TV on. I'm the one that chose to come here. I'm the one that chose to get out in the rain and get soaked and wet coming into the building. But you're here by the will of God. Can I tell you this? You cannot do anything unless God wills it in your life. You can't even take the next breath unless God wills it. So Paul says, I'm, I'm not anything special. It is only by the will of God that I'm called to be here. Listen, each one of us, my friends, listen, there's not one of us in this room or watching today that's more special than anyone else. It's just not the way it is. But it is by God's will that we are what we are. So we need to understand we're not God's gift, but also we have nothing and are nothing apart from the grace of God. If God doesn't will it for me in my life, I have nothing and I am nothing apart from him working in me. As a matter of fact, Ray Stedman said this, the evidence of a surrendered life then is an, an, is an available body, a willingness to help, to put yourself out, to be expendable, to respond to the needs God has placed in your life. And he goes on and says, the first place where this service becomes visible is right here in the local church itself, the body of Christ. So when we humble ourselves before God, we surrender ourselves over to Him, and we say, God, here I am, whatever you want, however you want, whenever you want, it's me, God, I surrender to you, I humble myself before you, then we make that evident when we become a part of a church. And he says, I took you from many to one. Then That also then would mean that we are nothing without the other parts of the body. We are nothing without each other. Amen? You and I need each other. 
As a matter of fact, Ephesians 4.16 says, From the whole body, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. In other words, we work together, not one of us doing something separate on our own, but by working together, we then grow the body of Christ spiritually, We also grow it physically, that when we are unified together, when we are lifting each other up, when we are functioning as that one body, as all the parts coming together and doing what we're supposed to do, when we surrender and let God supply what we need and he works through us, then we are going to know that we are going to grow this body, amen, because we need each other. I can't do this on my own. You can't do this on your own. We need each other, and once we decide that we need each other and we surrender over to each other, man, we become a whole lot stronger in that way, which then leads us to the second part is then to be accepting. So as we are humble, in order to be that one body, then we must be accepting. We must be an accepting people. First of all, accept that every person has a role to play, and each one of it's important. Can I tell you, my friends, that I understand that as the pastor of this church, I am not any more important than any single member of this place. I don't believe that, and I don't believe that you are more important than me. We are all together, and we need to accept that. We need to accept each other and say, hey, you know what? We all have a part here. We're all, all in this together. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 12, it says that if the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. And if they were all one member, where would the body be? In other words, if, if we're all the same, how can we function? Because we can't do it if we're all just alike. We all have the same gift. We all have the same abilities. And God has placed all of us here to do one thing. If all of us were in here to be preachers, who would be listening? I might even ask that right now. I'm the only preacher right now, but who is listening? Amen? Someone once said, if there's two people in a relationship and they're exactly alike, One of them's not necessary. Amen? Because we need each other. We need people different around us to make us more effective. That's why the body, oh, listen to me. That's why the body of Christ is such an amazing thing. Look how many people he's brought into this room together. Look how many people may be viewing us right now or viewing us a little bit later. Men, that we can all come together with all of our separate things, with all of our separate abilities, and he brings us together, and we're all one body functioning and bringing about glory to our Heavenly Father. Because we have to accept that we're not all the same. Because sometimes I think that we want so desperately to be around those who think like us, walk like us, talk like us, look like us, and basically are us. And then we don't understand when somebody different comes in, well, that's not how we do it here. That's not how we're supposed to be doing it here. We ain't never done it that way in this church. Huh? Huh? You see what I'm saying? The church is, we've got to accept that we're all different. And man, that's not a negative. That's a positive, amen? And not only that, then we must understand it. Every part affects the other parts. In other words, what you do affects me. What I do affects you. The Bible is very clear with that, the way that we affect one another. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 12, 26, And if one member suffers because we're so tied together and we're unified together, if one member suffers, we all suffer. But if one member is honored, all of its members rejoice with it. Because that's how we work, because we must understand we affect each other. One part of the body will affect how the other part of the body works. Case in point, have you ever been driving down the road, and and you look in the car next to you. And sitting in the car next to you, you know that the individual sitting in the car next to you, is their ears are hearing something, some music they like. How do you know it? Because you see them doing this, 
Or you see them singing and ever. Case in point, let me show you how that works. I've got a short video here that I want you to pay attention to and watch how what we hear affects the rest of our body. Let's watch that. Guys, go ahead and roll that. Oh, let's start over with the sound. We got to have it. Start it over, please. Let's hit the sound up. Because you got to hear this, I promise you. You want to hear this. Again, it worked. Welcome to my world, amen? <laughs> and the one Sunday that Jade gets to come back over here, I show that, amen? Thank you, you're welcome, Jade. But you see how when our ears hear something we like, the rest of the body responds to it. When our eyes see something we like, the body responds to it. So all of this is saying that our body of Christ should be so put together that what affects one part affects all the parts. And not only that in the positive, but my friends, can I tell you, it works that way in the negative. That what negative is going on in one part of the body affects everybody else. By what we say and what we do and how we act and how we react. And, and if something's not happy, if we want to show ourselves and make it known whether we're not happy, then that will put a damper on everything and everybody. So you see here that we need to be accepting of the fact in order to be the church like God wants us to be, we must be accepting of the fact that we have a role to play and everyone is important, that we are affected by the other parts, but also wrap it, getting ready to wrap it up, that we should also appreciate each other. We should be appreciative of each other, man, because we ought to care about each other. We ought to appreciate what you do and what you do and what you do and everybody appreciates what everybody does. And appreciate the fact, again, that I've talked about, we're all different. I mean, we got to accept that, and not only accept it, but appreciate it. I mean, we're not the same, and, I man, wouldn't it be boring if we were all the same? But we got to appreciate that fact, but also appreciate the fact that we're all important. Not looking at each other going, well, you know what, if they would all be like me and boy, if everybody worked as hard as I do. Man, that sounds like a, one of the Pharisees back in the time of Jesus when he said, Lord, I thank you that I'm not like them. But we got to begin to appreciate the fact that we're all important. And when one is not here, it affects everyone else. So when you say, well, I'm not going to be a part of the body. Okay, well, not only do you hurt yourself but folks, you hurt the body too. Because we need each part. And we need to begin to appreciate that, but also appreciate by helping each other. Each part of the body should be helping each other, should be coming along beside. And when one part of the body is ailing, the rest of the body ought to be able to, to help it out and to take care of it instead of pushing down and being negative and kicking it and man somebody once said the hardest thing about a christian being a christian is the uh, most amazing thing about being seeing christians is how they devour their wounded folks we ought not be devouring each other we already can i tell you you and i already have an enemy that wants to devour us we definitely don't need to be doing it to each other but when we begin to devour each other then the body becomes weak, but we ought to be a, show our appreciation by helping because you know what, my friend, listen to me. We don't know what each other's going through. 
We don't know what's happening around our, in our own lives with people around us. We don't know that. So we ought to be willing to help one another. When you see a brother or sister struggling, man, don't go kicking them. Don't go running around talk about them. Don't go pushing and telling everybody else how they ought to, in turn, not like what's going on here. Man, go help that individual out. They already have it tough enough. They definitely don't need the rest of the body now jumping on it. So often what I'm afraid that we do is that Satan wants to come around and beat the membership of the church with a stick. And then Satan grows tired and you know what he does with it? He hands other members the stick. Say, you take over with for me for a while. I'm a little tired of beating them up. Here, you take the stick and you beat on them a while. And then the next person hand them the stick. Now you beat on them a while. Listen, we ought to be appreciative by helping each other. We also be appreciative by encouraging one another. Man, we should not be tearing each other down. We need to be lifting each other up by our words, by our actions. Always be encouraging. Because you know what? Again, as I shared in the first service, when we see somebody's life, when, as a matter of fact, we walk in here today and we've seen each other's life, or you at home seeing what's going on in here, do you know how much of somebody's week we're seeing? We're seeing about that much of this whole week. Or this much of this whole month, this much of this whole year, this much of their whole life. And we don't have a clue about it. All we see is this little bit. And so often we take that little bit right there and we become become discouraging to them. And we begin to become judgmental to them. And we think that we're going to be able to say, well, if that had been me, I would never have. Folks, listen to me. I've told you this so many times being a pastor here. We better be careful of that because we love to say, well, if that would have been me, I would have. Or if that had been me, I would have never have. And boy, if I was put in that situation, listen, we've only seen that much of their... We don't know what went on with them the day before. We don't know what went on an hour before. Looking around this room, you don't know what everybody else is going through. You don't know what's been going on in my week. You don't know what's been going on in my month. You don't know what I've got facing me tomorrow or the next day or the next week. You don't know that about each other. So why in the world, knowing this much about somebody's whole life, would we want to, as the body, not be encouraging? We should never say that to somebody because we, listen, if you or I were put in the same position that we are not aware of, we might have been 10 times worse. How do I know? So folks, let us be appreciative by being encouraging, helping each other the way God would want us to be. But lastly, appreciate by unifying. Appreciate by unifying to each other, being unified, brought together. As a matter of fact, the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 through 3 says this. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of by which the vocation by which you've been called with all lowliness, gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing one another in love. Now listen to this last part. It's very important. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit. All right, do you know why it says endeavoring? That means to work hard, to make it a purpose, to make it your goal, because endeavoring is something that has to come by a lot of work. Can I tell you what the Bible is saying is unity in the body is not easy. That means you and I, we have to work at it. We have to continually be praying, God, keep my heart humble, keep my heart sensitive to my brothers and my sisters. Keep my purpose, your purpose, and not mine. God, we have to work. God, help me work to unify the faith. It takes a lot to unify. Listen, it takes a lot to unify the body of Christ. But can I tell you what? It only takes a little bit to break unity. You want to disrupt the unity of a church? It takes that long with that much effort, with any individual deciding they're not going to endeavor to keep unity. It's all about me. It's all about mine. It's all about how I, it's all about what I think should. And I promise you the unity of that body will go out the window. We must endeavor to keep the unity, listen, of the spirit. What spirit? That sweet, sweet spirit we used to sing about. Amen. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. 
And it's what? The presence of not you, not me. It's the presence of the Lord. His Spirit. We must endeavor to keep unity through His Spirit by appreciating the fact that we're many, but from that many, we are one. And imagine the power that can come from that body that's unified together with one purpose and one direction, that each member working to do their part, not waiting on every other part to do their part, but to be their part and to do it to realize that you're important if you're a member, that if you're not here, you're missing and we're missing. Unified together so that we can be this right here as I wrap it up. Let me read this text one more time. For I say, though, I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one measures of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we, being many, are one. We're one body in Christ and individual members of one another. We are a part of each other. So here today, if you're, if you're not sure if you can be a part, listen, you can't be connected to, to the church like this if you're not connected to God through the, Holy, through the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father. No man makes a connection to God except it's through me. So if you're here today and you're not sure if you know Jesus as your Savior, man, I want to call on you right here, right now, to call on his name, that, that you can sense the Holy Spirit working. If you're at home, man, call upon the name of Jesus this morning. And man, be connected to him and then connect to this body. And maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, man, I know I, 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 my heart has been heavy. My life has been heavy. You, man, I've been experiencing some struggles. And, and I, just, I just need some strength. Man, I, I, I need some encouragement today. That my friends, I want to pray over you and ask God to, to lift your spirits to encourage you this morning. That we can be renewed in our faith. And man, when we're renewed in our faith, and each one in here is renewed in our faith, recommitment, we're committing our lives to him. Imagine what this church can do. Well, what we've seen it, God will add daily to this body those that are being saved. Do you know Jesus? Are you unified in spirit? Here's your chance. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you today, Lord. We thank you for your love and your grace. Thank you for your watch care over us. And Lord, as we step into this time of invitation, Lord, I pray, as they're about to sing, come to the table. I pray, God, that there are people here, that if they don't know you as their Savior, they will come to that table. Join those sinners who've been made clean. Father, I pray for everyone here. I pray for those who are watching on this live stream. That, Father, your spirit would speak to them and that you would draw them into the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And, Father, I pray for those who may be saved, but, Lord, their spirits are heavy. Maybe they've been distracted by the things of this world. Lord, maybe they've even been guilty, as I have so many times, striking that unity. Maybe not being encouraging or accepting. Father, might you work in us today to be able to be that. But do it in this time, in this moment. My friends, before we stand and sing, the offering is for you to come. To come this morning. To be saved, to receive Jesus into your heart. Don't pass this time up. It's there for you to come and be refreshed in the Spirit of God working in you. That you can feel that newness again. You can feel that joy again, that peace again. That unity of the Holy Spirit that only He can bring to us. It's here. Would you come? Hear our prayers, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask you.